Today we're going to show you how to turn the Nerf Delta Trooper into the Destiny Origin Story Auto Rifle. Hey everybody, I'm Jonathan and this is Damage Darts, where we specialize in converting ordinary Nerf blasters into extraordinary prop blasters from popular video games and movies, and show you how you can do it too. If you like what you see on this channel, won't you be so kind as to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, leave a thumbs up like, and a positive comment below. Today we're going to show you how to turn the Nerf Delta Trooper into the Destiny Origin Story Auto Rifle. So let's get started. Alright, so here's the Delta Trooper that we're going to be working on. I went ahead and undid all the screws to spare you the high speed montage of taking them all off. So you just basically find all, all the contact points and unscrew those however there's a little this one's a little bit tricky you're going to need to pull your primer handle back to expose a screw here and then when you and then you undo the primer handle you're going to have to kind of pull up let me pull up and away to expose this screw right here when everything is assembled to undo that one so those two screws along the top of this slider portion are a little bit difficult you'll find you'll have to expose it by pulling back the prime handle loosening it again undoing these and then lifting up to get to that one back there so i'm going to go ahead and take this off here to show you guys the internals of it and you'll notice i got the spring out already it just pops right off this post and slides out i went ahead and took this out we're going to be replacing that with a uh, high powered upgrade spring and then uh, modifying it to a thicker uh, o-ring inside the plunger here we're going to be using a kit which we'll leave in the link in the description below. So here's what the internals look like. And again, before you start working on things, always take reference pictures with your cell phone or camera, whatever you have, um, so that you can reverse engineer, you know, get everything back together. So we're gonna be needing to take out everything from here because this comes apart. And I'll use this as an example. In uh, three pieces, the orange, the blue, and this gray handle, three different pieces, which is good for us uh, in doing this whole painting process. We're gonna be sanding off the Delta Trooper, the Nerf, all the labeling, of course, and probably sanding off some of this texturing as well, and uh, getting that all prepped. Also, one thing I should point out too, when you're disassembling, you'll find you gotta make sure you take off this back post too. There's two little screws right here, and um, this one right here, it's uh, they're two thicker screws. In fact, I'll show you guys what they look like. They're a little bit bigger and thicker. The head's a little thicker right here than the normal Nerf screws you see in there. So that's what those look like to unassemble it. We've also 3D print, modeled and 3D printed our own barrels for this project. There's the uh, top barrel and then the uh, faux barrel underneath. We'll be leaving those for free to download on thingiverse.com. We'll leave a link in the description below. If you don't have a 3D printer, just PM us on uh, YouTube or on our Instagram page at Damage Darts, and uh, we will have this kit for sale for those of you who need it. So I'm going to go ahead and just take out all of these internals and get everything uh, ready for painting. Now this piece, it actually is not as hard as it looks. Is um, what you've got to do. Here, sorry, so I can show you guys this. There's these two little wedges here on either side. Those ones come loose pretty well, just by taking a screwdriver and just wedging it, popping that one loose, pulling up right inside here, 
pushing there, popping that up, but it's going to bind on this little tiny wedge up in this slot. So what I had to do is as this was loosened, I just kind of had to take my painter's from spatula and just kind of work it up and pry and put tension here. And on the other side, just kind of, sorry, gradually, gradually um, work my way up on the screwdriver here on the flip side until it put enough tension to just pop that piece loose right there. Cause it's just this little bump of plastic that'll come loose from out of that slot. That's where it binds up. And then you've got that piece separated. All right, so the best way to get these pieces apart, you have to take your time and be very careful. On the orange, I used a small screwdriver and just kind of, you can kind of see some of the gouge marks there, but that doesn't matter, but just carefully pry through and um, actually push up on this part of the molding to release that a little bit and add some tension here. Then pry and push back on that while pushing with your hand a little bit, getting light pressure here until that pops up. Then it brings the tension all the way to here on this piece. And what I simply did was I took a pair of needle nose pliers and I put one end on top of the wedge and under here and just gave it a, a quick squeeze and the whole thing popped loose. So that's how I loosened that piece. On the handle portion, this part, there's a little wedge here. You can just kind of work it up and off and lift it up off so that'll create a little bit of pressure there and then that leaves this little wedge here and you just simply use your once you've got a little bit of tension hold right here and push up slightly so you want to like that and then you just use this wet this uh, screwdriver to just put some pressure on that wedge and it'll pop loose so that's how you take those pieces off so all together, these are the parts, once you've separated them, that you should have. This one right here, this one here, this one here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one and that little loop that's on the bottom of the handle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces separated from the main body of the blaster. So I've done all the sanding on all the pieces here. Uh, I'll show those to you guys next, but um, it's pretty straightforward to, un to disassemble everything. This was a little complicated, so I thought, uh, of course, to spare you guys the time of the high-speed montage of unscrewing everything, I've taken all the screws out, and I'm gonna show you how everything comes apart. Of course, this on the stock, that just simply comes off. <clears throat> then this part slides out along with this. And I'm, why I'm doing this too is it's better to just separate all the pieces so you can um, uh, get them all prepped with steel wool because it should have a fine sanding over everything so the paint has a good bite to it and paint everything separately that way <clears throat> it's just a cleaner look and then you've got this attachment here I've already done the screws here that slides out now uh, make sure you have something to put your screws into this little screw or spring rather goes right here and this see this is facing this way this should be facing this way and the spring goes in there. That's for your uh, switch here, so that slides out. We're not gonna need to paint the orange part right here, but rather just the little buttons themselves we're gonna need to paint. So I'm gonna tape off everything here and just paint that. Because the more internal sliding pieces um, you can uh, keep from painting, the better, so everything doesn't get gummed up with paint. So I'm gonna set that aside. <clears throat> and there's this piece, I'm gonna set that aside. And then this one's a little tricky here. There's some tabs that you have to push right in here. Uh, I've already got them loosened myself and right in here. And that will pop loose and it slides like so. See how you have to angle it and it slides out. So when you put it back together, it's got a kind of puzzle piece together and click. So we're gonna separate that. I'm gonna put that off to the side. And we're gonna do the same thing to the flip side here. There's a tab here we push into loose in the black piece there and likewise right there in the blue and 
it will probably it will slide out like this and cross over and come apart. So that's how that one comes apart. All right, so here is the end result of getting everything prepped for painting. So I'm gonna kind of take, talk you guys through the process here and spare you the time watching me do it. So each of these pieces, I uh, first off went and sanded off all the, the warning labeling, the nerf labeling using my Dremel sanding drum. So there's the Dremel, I just used that sanding drum. It's got a little bit of blue on it right now because I used a lot of that. So I sanded everything off using that first. Then I went over it with my can sander tool. Uh, this has the fine 1600 grit on it, but I started off going over it with the medium grit uh, sandpaper and then going over everything to smooth out what I did with the Dremel. Then finally changing it out to the 1600 grit and going over that so it's really, really smooth to the touch. That's the result you want. And we're going to go through it for a kind of distressed look. So if you get a few pock marks and little dips and divots from the use of the sanding drum, that's fine because that's going to look, actually give the realistic chipped and scraped look that we're going to go for and, um, at the end of this result. And then finally going over each of these pieces with some steel wool everywhere. So all the parts that are shiny on this, you want to get a dull kind of matted satin look to it. That means we got some nice micro scrapes in here that when we paint it with the spray paint, it will allow it to adhere much better to the plastic. So those are the processes. So take your time, be patient with this process so that you get a good result and a good bite so the paint stays on to your blaster when you get everything done. So and, oh, and one other thing too, so you don't get any of the wool dust left on this. I went ahead and rinsed them all off with water, laid them out in a towel, and let them um, fully dry, about a day or so. You can towel it off. If you're in a hurry and you don't want to wait that long, you can towel it off and then let it air dry for about a half a day just to make sure all the water is completely dried off of it. That gets rid of all the sanding dust and all the... Um, little pieces of steel wool that might get on the plastic. So now everything is done, being prepped for painting, and it's pretty much, uh, let's go over it, I guess. All, all the main bases of the blaster, you're gonna need to, to sand down and, and um, get ready for painting. Now, you'll see some of these are already black, and we've already got some gray. Now, these ones are gonna end up being black anyway, so I'm gonna leave them as is, and those are just gonna get the uh, black spray paint. But as for the blue and the orange, I'm gonna be going over that with a gray primer first. And then we're gonna be going through over that with uh, some color. But first I'm gonna take all these pieces and reassemble it into the blaster and then um, compare it to the actual picture of the Destiny blaster to uh, see where we're gonna be putting all of our, our masking tape for painting. And when we paint this stuff, we're going to be starting, uh, as I've said in uh, earlier videos, start with your light colors first. So we're going to be doing our, of course, our light gray primer, and then working up through the layers to our darker colors last. So lighter first, darker last. We're going to work through all the color schemes of painting in that direction. All right, so I've got everything prepped here with primer. So these are the blue, what were the blue and orange parts that I had sanded down with the uh, steel wool. And uh, I went ahead and used what I had on hand. Now you can use gray primer uh, as your base, but I had some um, Rust-Oleum self-etching automotive primer. It's kind of a greenish uh, military type olive color. So then I, I put a, uh, an even coat of that on these pieces and then I went lightly over it with some Rust-Oleum metallic to get that silver that I wanted because when I paint this and if it gets dinged up or some scrapes what I'm hoping is it'll just create more of a distressed look and you'll see this metallic underneath as if it were scraped metal and I may also even use the technique the toothpasting technique and I'll show that to you here as we move along and these little divot spots that I've created so that uh, I put little dabs of toothpaste in there and then when I add all my paint I wipe it off of the damp cloth and then that reveals the uh, metal uh, color underneath. So that's what this looks like. Um, now I'm going to put it together um, piece by piece 
and see where what color scheme I need to uh, go with. What, well, actually, what layers I need to tape and paint and just kind of go through the whole layering sequence of giving this thing a bit of color. All right, first off, I'm going to start with the uh, stock on the back. Now, I'll, upon looking at the um, picture of the blaster that we're going uh, going for, I'm going to put this up on the uh, screen for you guys to take a look at here so you know what I'm uh, um, going for on the uh, paint scheme, the uh, skin of the blaster, so to speak. <clears throat> so what I'm going to be doing is I've taped off this area because it's already black. I'm going to leave that black. Uh, I may go over with a little bit of uh, matte clear, uh, the matte clear top coat when I, because uh, after we're done, after we're done doing all the painting, I'm going to give it a uh, protective clear coat of a matte clear. So this will end up turning this black right here, that's kind of a satin gloss, to a matte finish anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and just tape that off, and the rest of this is going to be gold, as you can see on the picture there, uh, the gold stock. <clears throat> then I taped off this area that's silver presently. <clears throat> I'm going to paint the rest gold here. Then I'm going to cover this up and tape it off, leaving this silver part exposed and paint that black. The reason being is when I combine the two, you'll kind of get the idea here of what this is going to look like. We're going to get that black back here to the stock. Then all of this is going to be gold. This will be black. And I'm going to take this piece and paint it black also. So when I slide it in, well, I got the tape in the way. but. There you go, you kind of get the idea. Then we're gonna have this whole entire piece black, this part black and the rest gold, so that will give a very close resemblance of the stock as is shown in the photo. All right, so I went ahead and did the gold, as I talked about, and here's how it turned out. Um, I, I didn't quite assemble this yet, just so, so I can show you guys how I did that. There's that part I taped. <clears throat> taped that off, hit everything with gold, then tape the gold off, hit this with the flat black, left this piece black, and then um, basically then all I gotta do is just interlace them like so, and put those together, and I have the stock, and then of course I put, I painted this piece black, try to align it properly here so I can kind of show you guys the look. I think I had it right the first time. There you go, and then there's that whole that whole black portion there with the gold, like I wanted. I went ahead and also did the handle. I went ahead and taped this part off, hit the gold, taped off the gold, and then did a few coats of the flat white here just to take care of that while I was at it since it was just a really quick paint job. So I went ahead and took care of that. I hit the handle pieces with gold right here. The uh, bottom little piece that goes here with gold, keep everything. And then I went ahead and painted our 3D printed barrel. We did make this. Um, we're going to be uh, selling this barrel kit. So if any of you are uh, interested in purchasing this, just leave your interest in the comments below. And then here's the other second barrel piece that goes to it. What I did with this is I went ahead and put just some painter's tape and cut it to the shape and length and size that I wanted and put four of those all the way around and then hit this with gold. Now the trick on this one is if you don't paint it enough, I grab my light here, you're gonna have paint, you're gonna have light showing through your paint. So I used my little LED. You can use a flashlight or anything else, but I just had this LED light right here. As you can see, no paint is showing through. It is a little bit, see right there, but you're not gonna see that. That part's going to actually sleeve into the clamshell of the actual blaster. But that's what you'll be getting if you just put a light coat. You're gonna see light through the whole thing. So I had to hit it with multiple light coats until no light showed through the paint and just the windows there. So I went and put that with paint. And as you see, the remaining parts I have primed, I've got them um, <clears throat> already taped up for white, so I want to show you guys these. You have this for reference. This piece, I just taped that top half, and I'm gonna hit that with white, and then tape that part off, and then hit this part with gold, okay? And then likewise, the other half. I taped this part off, and I'm gonna be hitting that with white, as well as the little piece that slides up in there, white. 
tape this off. I'm going to be hitting that white and the other side of it likewise. And then this portion, I taped off this. I'm just going to leave that silver and I taped off this and this part gets painted white. <clears throat> now all the other the other inverted the inverses of all these will be painted gold except for this. This I'm going to be painting. It'll be I'll, I'll show this in the next segment here. I've got to do a little bit different where I've got to hit a little bit of gold. I've got to paint some gold here and then cut a shape for the grip right here that's going to be gold to tape that off and hit the rest with a flat black. But next I'm going to go ahead and hit all of these areas that I've taped and prepped with the white. All right, so here's the first phase of the painting done. Let me just kind of take you through the process. Um, so of course these were all silver before. Um, so what I did is I just went ahead and taped off. This was the and uh, this was black, actually correction. Some of these were silver. These were the um, blue and orange pieces that were painted silver. Now this portion, as you saw earlier in the video, was black already black. So what I went ahead and did is I just taped off this area like I had said I was going to do earlier. I taped it off and then just painted this gold because this bonds really, really fast. It's already textured and it bonded really well to the black. And then I just took the tape off and then I've got the black backing that I wanted on the end of the stock and the gold body. And I did the same to this one. Now this one I had to do a little bit more uh, differently. Uh, this was the silver one. So I had to tape off this section, paint it gold, let it dry, then tape um, off this area, I just used some uh, some newspaper and some tape to cover up this area, leaving this exposed, and hit that with flat black, and then let that dry and take it off, and then that was the end result there. Uh, because when it combines, I'm just kind of slide it together right now. I'm not going to slide it all the way because the paint is still kind of drying. Uh, then that whole area is filled with black, like it should be, and then this piece comes in behind it. And correction, this piece goes in behind it and meshes in, and then we get that full gold, full black look of that stock. So that's how I did that piece. And then for the handle, I went ahead and uh, I taped off this section. This was black, but I taped off this section, painted this gold, then I taped and covered this section, exposed this. I went ahead and went over it with some self etching primer first, that greenish color. Uh, just to get uh, it really set for this white and then I hit it with a few light layers of white primer to get that ba white back of the handle in and this was already gray so then I just went over that with gold and that is going to click in there so we got that full gold handle with that white backing and lastly I haven't shown you guys these yet these are specially modeled by us uh, and 3d printed this is the barrel that goes on the end it has the barrel adapter and then that second barrel, that's the light up barrel at the bottom. And we're gonna show you later how to install that piece. So these are both uh, 3D printed. I printed this in silver PLA and then just spray painted that in gold. And then this one was in clear PLA. Uh, reason being is I went ahead and just cut some pieces of painter's tape, uh, four strips of that, and then hit it with gold and then took those off. And it's hollow because we are going to be putting a, a um, violet colored LED inside this and powering it up from the handle so you can turn the switch off on on the bottom of the handle and it will light up underneath here so that's going to be super cool so uh, we went I went ahead and while I was painting everything else gold just got those set up so now that we've got that base that kind of covers the barrel the handle the stock now we've got the mid piece of the blaster and that's going to be a little more complicated because we've got everything right now is still all in silver we got that priming handle that's over the top and those mid sections and I'm going to try and um, basically I'm going to have to take and assemble this whole thing and then map out how I'm going to be doing this uh, the vanguard that purple and white vanguard design on the main body of the blaster and then that mini one towards the front how that's going to look and of course I've got to work through my lighter layers up to my darker layers uh, in sequence so that's what I'm going to do next. Alright, so here is the next result of the painting process. I just went ahead and stuck these all together so you kind of got an idea of what it's going to look like here. And this is the white here, and we're going to have that V eventually going here, and a small V here. Um, so I did take this part off, and then I took the tape off and, and hit it with the white primer. 
and then took the tape off. That's what you see as the silver now. <clears throat> now what I've got to do next, let me set these off to the side. What I've got to do next is take these portions and tape off the white. And then, um, and then this being exposed, I'm going to be painting, well, in this particular reason, area, I'm going to be painting this area, just kind of the front area gold. And then I'm going to tape off this section here and a portion right here to represent that under grip to uh, keep the gold there and then hit the rest with a flat black. That's the process I'm going to be doing there. On these pieces, I'm going to just simply tape off the white, paint the gold there. Same with this, tape off the white, paint the gold there. And of course we talked about that just doing on this part here, adding that grip and that gold piece and then the rest is flat black. Taping off, putting the gold here. Oh, and one other thing I've got to do is tape off along here because this whole front end, including this piece, will be gold as well as the top. So I'm going to have to tape that off accordingly to paint the gold. And of course, on this piece, same thing. I want this whole front end to be gold, including that, and then the whole top part here, gold. So I'm going to be taping that off that with gold and then showing you guys the results here's the next phase of the painting so as you can see here I've got the uh, the gold and the white as I uh, had planned it turned out great now the next thing I've got to do as I talked about uh, mentioned earlier is that bit of gold I just spritz it on this front end here because I'm going to be taping off this piece here and then I'm going to uh, tape a section right about here, just kind of a triangular section to uh, mimic that gold, un that under grip right there. So I'll have a piece of gold here and then there. I'm going to do that also to the flip side. I uh, also wanted to point out, this turned out great too. I went, like I had mentioned, I'm going to, I taped off right here and painted along this and the whole front end. So that is what that looks like. So now again, I'm going to tape these pieces off, hit this with flat black. So you'll ha I'll have the black and the gold on these sections. All right, so here's the next phase of painting. It turned out super. There's my flat black and those gold areas that I wanted to keep that way for that under grip look. I went ahead and laid this stuff out so you could see we're coming very close to finishing and getting that origin story blaster look. Uh, the next thing we've got to do here in the process, well, first off, I noticed that there is a band right here in the molding that looked very much like the priming slider on the origin story blaster. And, and so I'm gonna need to do the same on this side. This one's a little bit more, um, a bit of more detail here. Right here, that circle and that line, reason being as I believe this little, um, this little uh, button goes in there. One of, the, one of those two buttons will go, some sort of button I think goes there. I'll have to paint that gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape that off and paint that gold. Um, the other portion I've got to hit here that I noticed I could have forgotten was the trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and tape off this back end. I tend, I, I prefer to not paint anything that has a lot of sliding to do right here. So I usually tape up probably about to there, only the area that it's exposed. I'm gonna hit that with some steel wool and rough it up a bit. Hit it with some um, primer, then some gold. And then this particular area, the jam door, I didn't paint yet. So I'm gonna to need to uh, rough it up with some steel wool and then hit it with some primer, then some white, then tape off this edge and paint this part gold so it mimics that whole top end. So I'm gonna to have to take care of that. This little button here in gold. After that, I'm gonna be uh, lining everything up and putting on the Vanguard V. So that is gonna be hitting somewhere around in here. I'm gonna tape those two gold bands. There's gonna be that purple V, then another gold band, band and then a small V Vanguard symbol here. So I'm gonna just get some painter's tape, trim that up to uh, size and lay that out to hit the gold first. I'm gonna have, go ahead and keep that V, that purple color covered. And then I'll, I'll tape off everything except that little V exposed here and here and hit that finally with the darkest color in the purple. So I'm gonna be taking care of that next. All right, here's the next phase. I've got all the taping done for the gold striping on the Vanguard logo. Um, so I've got this all masked off, ready to go to put the gold right here. And on that priming handle, when it overlays, that it matches everything accordingly. And here's the end result of what, it, what it's going to look like. 
I went ahead and did this side. So there's that. There's that. And then with it laid over the top, that's what it turned out to be. That turned out great. Now, a couple things I forgot to paint gold that I re <clears throat> remembered after the fact is that trigger. This is pretty much all I need to paint. This is the part that is exposed for the trigger. And I, I, te I tend to like to keep everything unpainted. That is the working mechanism so things don't gum up. So I did the trigger. And um, oh, let's see here. The top of the, oh, the, this part I'm actually in process. This is the jam door. I did it in white, and then I'm gonna put some tape here and then hit it with gold so that when it's, of course, on top right here, we've got that all aligned and matching. So I'm gonna get that gold band painted in that. And then I did the uh, priming, this handle, this handle portion here. So I went ahead and clicked that together, but it was the goal. I, I forgot to paint the gold right here. That's gonna need to be done as well. So when everything's put together, you've got that gold seamless line down the whole entire portion of the blaster. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this <clears throat> with some gold. Another thing I wanted to explain is the purple V. Now this is a little oversized. I'm going to show you this paper template I created. Um, so when I slide it down, I've got the, those white separation lines on either side. Um, right there. So I allowed that tape. I went ahead and taped a little larger than the triangle. So when I hit it with the gold, you're going to get those white separation lines. And then I'm going to take everything off and use this as the guideline and then tape, tape off everything from here, leaving this part exposed for the purple triangle in the center. Here's the next result with the purple in the center. And that jam door, I went ahead and hit that with the gold. So that's going to be underneath that priming handle. That's going to finish off that gold on the entire top. And again, there's that white separation line that I talked about. Here's that template that I used. So I just kind of slid that in place and then just put a piece of tape here and here and then filled out everything with some paper and some tape masking everything off and then leaving that area exposed. I went, I used some high gloss purple. It was just standard um, purple. I would recommend sticking with a, I believe it's Krylon, um, or a Rust-Oleum max coverage, any kind of max coverage of paint or a paint primer combo, those tend to lay faster, a, a thicker lay down and they dry quicker. I had to put like probably four, four thin coats to finally fill in a nice dark purple result because I just had standard uh, enamel gloss paint. So stick with uh, the hot, the max coverage type of formulas or the paint primer combos, then those tend to do better, you know, like in the case of this uh, gold or the white. So there's the purple. Then I'm just going to take some painter's tape right here and just trace out this same Vanguard symbol, cut it out. I, at least I'm going to take take one. Ver yeah, I'm going to actually take it, cut it out, put it on here, take a piece of tape and cover over temporarily the triangle that's going to be purple, and then take that off and then cover up the areas I had painted gold and hit that with a little bit of purple. So we got a smaller version of this right here. So that's the next thing to do. Oh, and I'm also gonna be doing this large triangle on the flip side of the blaster. All right, so here is the final result. Turned out great. Um, of course, I added that small Vanguard insignia. So the purple and gold um, looks superb. So now the next thing we've got to do is basically assemble the clamshell to uh, see where we, uh, just to kind of get an overview of the schematics as I'm going to be getting everything ready to add this uh, battery power source for the lighting for this lower barrel. Um, actually, I've also got to do a drill, drilling up here in the front to install this lower barrel here. But uh, before we get into all that, we just got to get this thing put together. So, without further ado, First off, let's go ahead and start installing the stock on the back. That's the quickest, easiest one here to do. So I've got everything snapped in place on each of these clamshells. Uh, around here for all the rest of the stuff. We're going to need this piece is the insert right there. <clears throat> and then the mounting portion right here to um, click it onto the back of the blaster. So, first off, I'm going to flip this. Let's 
kind of a two-fold thing here. I'll be sliding this in. Find out how it fits into the molding. Uh, actually, it makes more sense this way because what's going to have to happen is this piece slides in right there. So there it is. Oop, that slides in, and then this. To the clamshell here. That sets in, that sets in. Oh. So I got that fit in, and then I clamshell this over the top. Boom. Everything settles in place. And of course, you're going to put that little spring mechanism back in there. First, I'm going to go ahead and get some of these screws in here, and then we'll work on that portion of the stock. Next, we've got to install the spring for the locking mechanism and all of the retaining pieces. Now, there are a few springs to choose from here. Uh, there's one smaller, roughly the same size, but it's a little bit weaker. This goes in another portion of the blaster when we assemble everything. There's a really long one. Of course, that one doesn't go there. Um, there's another one, roughly the same size, that's got a lot more strength, a little thicker gauge to it. That's the one you're going to want to use. I tried, accidentally tried the smaller one, and there it just wasn't enough oomph to get this mechanism to move. So this was evidently not the one to use. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece in. Uh, keep in mind when you do this, there is a... Flip it this way so you guys can see it. There's a little notch right there. That's going to match up with the notch on this piece right there. So make sure you line that up, drop that in. We're gonna take our little thick spring here and drop that right into the space in the middle. And then add the retaining piece like so. I'll hold that in place with my thumb so you guys can see how this works. So you get it that you need that firmer spring to get everything to come back into place after everything slid on to really hold that stock solidly against blaster. So with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the screws in and then we're done uh, assembling the stock for the blaster. I've got that assembled and there will be two smaller screws. So um, when I took this apart, I had two little loops of my tape rolls and I just put everything accordingly so all of the main clamshell screws went into here, and then all the other doodads and odds and ends went into here, and I also kept a Tupperware for all the internals and the screws. That went in separately as well, so I highly recommend separating those things out because there are two smaller screws, a little bit smaller than the normal standard Nerf screws, um, to mount this little retaining clip in place, and it works great. So now we're gonna go ahead and set that aside. accordingly with that. So I've got some screws here. These little silver washer screws. There's going to be one that goes right there. And of course the other one on the flip side to keep everything in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. Maybe not really quick, but just a little snug because it is just a retaining piece and allows everything to slide accordingly. Back so I can get to it. Add this little screw, get everything together.
disassembly portion. Slide that in place. I'm not putting all the internals in just yet as I'm going to be doing some cutting and I just want to see in all the plastic molding how things are going to work. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click this piece together because the other side is going to be holding the battery, I believe. Oh, correction, this is the side. This is the side that's going to be holding the whole battery. I'm going to be using a Dremel. I've marked it in Sharpie. I'm going to be cutting that out with my Dremel uh, and popping that out so I have enough space. It's still enough to get, it's not cutting into where the screws and mounting areas are, but just enough to get this little mini um, AAA battery holder inside. So if I need to change the batteries, I can get access to it. So I'm going to leave this one uh, not put together. I'm going to make it a little bit. This one right here can be seated in place. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Everything lines up. So there's little wedges that click. Just flex things around a bit. There we go. That's the snap I wanted to hear there and there. So now I've got that part completely assembled. I'm going to go ahead and slide this one in. Get some retaining clips there. Snap, snap. So that's good on the flip side. You guys kind of take a look at that. There we go. A little gold. that into place like so. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that and slide that in. Got the um, little metal rod here. So that's just going to slide right through like so. And we'll just set that in place. For that jam door access. Slide this out of the way. And get a better alignment of this little piece here. got that door in here and the stock will be right there as well just go ahead and slide it on into that locking point there that's great actually we're gonna I'm gonna take that off because we're gonna need to do a little bit of drilling actually so before I do that I'm gonna take this piece out This part in place. I don't need to really put that piece there just yet because <clears throat> what I really want to get to right now. Okay, looks right there. Is this portion. So in the front end, there's conveniently a little hole right there. I believe I'm gonna be drilling up above that. Uh, let me take this off. Momento. And put this mount back in. I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side too. Boom. Drop this down. So what, what I want to do here is put that barrel extension on. There's the barrel extension. And again, if you are interested in purchasing this kit, just uh, leave a message in the comments below. You can also email us at summitcreative1 at gmail.com. You can find that on our About tab of the channel. and Or you can get a hold of us. Uh, you can PM us on Instagram as well, at Damaged Arts, to, uh, to get this kit. So this one is going to be setting... I kind of used that hole as, as a... An ideal spot for this. 
if I were to drill into that and it clamshelled in, that looks about right, pretty darn close, just under that barrel. So I'm going to use this as a guide and just use a drill. What I'm going to need to do is I have to take my calipers and measure this. I'll let you guys know what that thickness is. There, see right here, there's that slot. I'm going to need to measure that thickness of that post just on the inside there because what's going to happen is this right here, the space, this gap, is the same thickness as the clamshell, the wall on the clamshell of the plastic here. So when I drill that hole, this is just going to slide in to the um, to one half of the clamshell, and then this piece is going to go down on top of it, pinning it in to have basically a result like that, a, a nice uh, stiff fixture inside the um, entirety of the blaster. So I'm going to go grab a, dr a drill bit, take a measurement here, and get ready to do that. So I've measured this barrel, and this space, this gap right here, is the same diameter as this. This was approximately a little bit, a smidge over a half inch. It was 0.558, something like that. Um, so what I'm going to need to do, <clears throat> what I have available to me right now, I don't have a half inch um, drill bit, but I do have a half inch auger here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the tip here and just gradually, slowly bore my way in, uh, centering it as best I can on that circle and then just cutting out a half inch circle right there. And then I, I, I'm probably going to have to end up using my drum sander on my Dremel just to open it up a little bit bigger for this to this diameter to be correct fit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically use this portion and line it up. If it fits, then I know that I've got a good fit for that little that gap area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take um, my time in drilling that out and getting that prepped for this to clamshell in. Here's the end result. So what I ended up doing is I took the whole clamshell, just to get back together so I can show you guys here. Put together, I went ahead and put screws here, here, and here to hold everything firmly closed. And then I took my drill bit here, and then there's that pre-existing circle, and I just pressed uh, firmly against it, but then slowly advanced into that hole, let it go ahead and bore it slightly, just gradually bite into the plastic and bore that thing away, and then work my way to the next cutting blades, and then picked up a little bit of speed to start slicing away at that plastic. I broke through. There's a little bit of the molding, orange molding inside here, structural stuff. Just push through that until that cuts and breaks away. It'll rattle around, probably don't worry about it. It'll cut away that plastic that you don't need. After that, I went ahead and undid the screws. Part clamshell here. So I went ahead and took apart the clamshell, and then I took my Dremel. Got the cutting wheel, I'll show you that later. But I had my drum sander first. I put that in. <clears throat> and then just, and it happened to actually be pretty much the exact diameter <clears throat> of the barrel. So that worked great. I went ahead and turned it on and just push down and let it sand away and open up this part of the hole bigger. I just gradually, again, don't rush it, just gradually let it sand away till it bumped on the bottom right there and then stopped and removed all the extra plastic, did that to the other side. That allowed for this barrel to fit perfectly. And then I needed to take my cutting wheel <clears throat> and then I went up inside of the blaster here and I had to cut away all of that molding, all that structural stuff, um, to allow for the disc right here to fit. So there's that, that molding it needs to, there's the molding it needs to press up against. That, that molding fits in between here. That disc is behind it, and then this little shield shape is in front, which works great because even if it's slightly off or it's not so pretty in the cut hole, this covers it up. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that down onto it. And press fit that on there. Tilt it a little bit you want this little shield shape in the barrel lining up properly. That looks pretty good. Press that down. <clears throat> then I'm going to take the other half. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put 
barrel mount on here. Just to try things out and see how it turns out. Press that down on it. Put things together. <clears throat> like I'm not quite getting things together just yet so I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up use my cutting wheel and you may need to do this too and just shave away a little bit more of the plastic until I get everything to clamshell together like I want it to so let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back this turned out beautifully so yeah I went ahead and shaved a little bit more plastic and then it press fit perfectly so you can kind of you can see what I mean when it shields over the top of that it hides everything great and then um, so now, um, why I wanted to get this together is then I want to make sure that this is fitted because now I'm going to work on the wiring because the power source is going to be here inside the handle. <clears throat> I'm going to need to go through the molding and behind here so it doesn't get in, in the way of the uh, magwell. And then underneath, all the way underneath here. So I probably am going to run the wires down through here. So I'm going to need to take the cutting wheel and cut away some of the molding to make a wire way underneath here up under through here to this the LED light that will be here. I'm also going to be putting this little on off switch right there. So I'm going to need to also use a Sharpie, cut that away. Um, and then just just enough, of course, to have this on off switch exposed to turn the light on and off from underneath. So like so when you're holding it, you can turn it on, it has that light effect, turn it off. So I'm gonna open this up and get things ready to take care of that. I got everything opened up here so you can see how I'm gonna be laying out the wiring. Now I've got a double A holder. Again, I'm gonna leave a link, link in the descriptions below to all the stuff I'm using for this. Now it's gonna fit in this handle here. So this post has got to go. Luckily that is not going to be a post that a screw goes into it's just that one so I'm going to cut that all the way down to this black plastic with my cutting wheel and get rid of that you can also use um, let me even just do that too just the messy way and take these snips and go here and, and break that off and then use a Dremel sanding tool to just sand the rest of it I need to get rid of that once I do that I, uh, I went ahead and dropped the trigger in to see where that mechanism is so all the wires are going to go below the trigger here so when I get that in, I've marked a silver sharpie where I gotta cut with my cutting wheel, cut these pieces out. So I gotta go, I gotta cut out that, cut out that, and then it's gonna uh, lay down there. I'm gonna put a pip of hot glue to seat the wire down against the blue molding here. Then I cut uh, that silver spot here. Then, as you can see, I've lined with little dots. I'm gonna drill a hole here, 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 which will go all the way through to here and come out <clears throat> to the uh, we're going to be putting the little off on switch here that's going to wire to the off on switch and then the other two of the tines it'll take those uh, well, let me show you here how this is going to go go down here <clears throat> i've already i've already marked the two of them if you get a piece like this and there's three terminals on each side basically just clip two of them off uh, a set of them off and the would be the and then the uh, ones close to each other, the way you're going to wire it, that'll determine which is on and off on this switch. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and wire the power source to these first two here. And then the other second set will be wired directly to the LED, so that creates the on-off circuit. And so the wire is going to go through here, behind the magwell basically, and out here to the switch. And then the light's going to go up inside this small barrel there. So that's how I'm going to lay everything out. Again, I'm going to have to mark the, uh, um, I'm just kind of measure how much space I need. That little square, that dark square that the switch is in is basically all I'm really going to need right here to cut away on this side and the other side of the, the uh, clamshell so that when I um, mount this in, which luckily fits perfectly in between that screw post and this little um, molding that uh, puzzle pieces with the other one slides nicely right in there so I'm gonna just uh, most likely throw a little dab of epoxy putty to hold that in place and then uh, with that cutaway it'll fit nicely right there underneath uh, that handhold which will turn that light on so I've just got to go ahead and make those cuts and those hole uh, drills and then get some of my 
wire ready to solder and lay down all of the electronics. All right, so here's the end result of the battery system with the lighting. I've got my uh, two AAA battery holder. The wire comes out to about midpoint here. I had to go ahead and solder in some more wire to continue it to the switch here. The first two times, the wires go there. The second two times, the wires go to the light. So when I turn on the switch, voila, it works great. And I went ahead and put a little bit of hot glue here to hold this switch in place. And then I went ahead down here. Let me pull this out of the way so you guys can see it. The wire goes down up against the clamshell. I put a little bit of hot glue there to hold that in place. And then of course I made the cuts as necessary with my Dremel cutting wheel to put the wires through here and then drilled some holes all the way through the molding here to continue it all the way to the front as needed. So it is out of the way of the magwell here and any other mechanisms on the blaster. So now what I have to do is go ahead and put in all the internals here and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the upgrades necessary to give this extra firepower. Oh, some things you guys are gonna need to do the wiring here that's going to be super helpful, actually uh, completely essential, is some a set of helping hands to hold the wires in place when you do the soldering. The soldering iron. Um, then I've got my, uh, a whole multi-pack of different sizes and colors of heat shrink because what I had to do, of course, is solder the contact points here and then heat shrink those contacts just to make sure that everything is, is isolated and insulated properly. So you're gonna need that and then, of course, some uh, soldering wire. Again, I'm gonna put all the materials I use, including all the soldering and everything for the electronics and the link in the description below. So now let's go ahead and get to the internal modifications. Another oversight that can easily happen when you are installing everything again is this little switch here <clears throat> before this goes over the top of it you've got to make sure it's the right one uh, reason being is this there's a little wedge cut here that's got to go this way so that it wedges up properly inside this mechanism to release that pin here so on this side of the clamshell it gets this button with the wedge going that way. So I'm going to drop that in and then put this <clears throat> back in place accordingly. Okay, so yeah, so you're going to need that button there and then this one is going to go on the opposite side. So just make sure you have the direction of these little wedges on those pins the correct direction when you're doing the install. An important thing to make note of when you're reassembling here on this side of the clamshell, you've got this piece and this spring. You're going to need to take, before you click in the handle, this spring right here, that loop, is going to have to go right there over that loop. So it's going to have to loop around there and then you put the piece over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now so you guys can see that. I looped one over that hook there and I'm going to have to take the other end, put it over there, and then push it down on the post. So because there's this little piece right here that pins this down in it, it retains it. At this the top of this touches right there, closing everything in so that you don't get frustrated when you're installing everything. Be sure you do that first. I think that's the most little difficult piece that can be easily missed. Okay, so here's the plunger system portion of the blaster that launches the dart. So uh, basically it all moves like so. When it comes out, after you prime the uh, dart, and then bring it back out for launching. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit further than normal. There it is. That O-ring creates an airtight seal along this portion. Let me get it back in here, show you guys again. Okay, so we got the airtight seal right there, sealing off the chamber here. Um, so the kit that we're gonna be using today, we're gonna leave a link in the description below where you can get that. There's a larger O-ring that gets put around there, which we did. Uh, there's different various sizes, and you'll just have to try them out and see which one, one works best for you. 
Uh, you might even find the stock one works best. Whichever one is, go, that's where that seal, that O-ring is to create the air seal. The other one <coughs> is a plunger itself. There's a slightly larger O-ring that we replaced that we placed here to give it a much tighter air seal in the chamber here. So then when it comes out and then that seals off this area, then all the air power is here and it gets forced down the tube to the dart, which is right here in this breech area, and then launched. And then this is the portion that does the slamming of all the air. So we're replacing the stock spring with this higher gauge upgrade spring that's part of the kit as well as the O-ring for here and here, and the catch ring that holds it all together before you pull the trigger to launch it all. Um, this catch ring is re the spring that's on here is double strength versus the stock one that used to be there, which is much lighter and a little weaker and has a lot um, more trouble holding up to the larger power spring. So it, that comes with the kit as well. So double strength catch ring spring, power spring, and various sizes of O-rings to create that nice tight air seal. So now I've got the O-rings in here. I'm gonna be putting on this upgrade spring here and getting everything put back into the blaster. And again, you guys can use the previous part of this video to see how all that goes together. Another problem we came up against when we had this thing installed and firing, all of a sudden, the darts stopped firing properly. And I opened it up to find that this small O-ring came loose. So when, when the uh, plunger moved, when this post moved this way, the O-ring rolled off and then at firing, the air shoved the O-ring inside this hole. So basically dislodged the O-ring and then pushed it into here because it kept coming loose. So what I did to remedy that is I used some, I used some quick set, some DAP Quick Seal Plus adhesive caulking. So it served as a really nice glue, but a rubberized glue. Uh, I put that in the groove first and then rolled the O-ring on and then smoothed everything out and then let it dry. So now I'm not going to have this O-ring rolling off anymore. And then I, of course, oh, before I did all that, I cleaned all the grease off with some alcohol. So you want to clean it off with alcohol. Chances are you'll have the same problem. Clean this off with alcohol, then put the caulking, just a little bit of it, of caulking in there, roll the O-ring on, smooth it out with your finger, and then just let that dry thoroughly, and then everything should be set. So then now all I've got to do is use some lithium grease and re-grease this and get it back together. And here is what the end result of that light-up barrel looks like. Alright, so I've got the uh, Nerf Chrono Barrel hooked up to the end here. It's added a little bit of an angle because we added that barrel down here, so it kind of obstruct, it obstructs to lock it completely into place, but it still serves its purpose. If you haven't seen our unboxing review of that, just click the card here and check that out. So we're going to try and shoot four rounds through here so and see what FPS. Again, we've got the larger O-ring in the plunger, the smaller O-ring in that secondary plunger that we caulked in place so it didn't roll off and the, the double strength catch ring spring and the new upgrade power spring in here. So with all those internals, let's see what we get. All right, we're at 96.3, try that again. Got 101. And we've got 95. Now I did try this earlier and I got a high of 103 FPS on there. So it looks like we're getting anywhere around 95 to 103 FPS on the upgrade. All right, so we're outside. We are gonna shoot six rounds down range. I'm gonna shoot three straight, three angled and see the distances that we get. Flag. All right, let's go ahead and walk down and see uh, what those distances are straight. 
Whoops. Crowd again. One. So we're at about uh, 58 feet in the first one. 58. We got about uh, 65 feet on the second one, and six and about 66 feet on the third one, shooting everything straight. That was a good one. All right, so let's try that out. So you got 89 feet on the first one. 89, 90, 90. All right, so we found the other two. Uh, the first one actually was 79 feet, the second one was 87 feet, and the third one was roughly 89, 90 feet. So that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good distance uh, shooting it arched. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed watching that tutorial on turning the Nerf Delta Trooper into the Destiny Origin Story Auto Rifle. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, just click the double D icon below. You'll help us create more cool content for your enjoyment and inspiration. Also, check out some of our other videos. Until next time, I'm Jonathan, and this is Damaged Darts.